It's maintaining the boundary from the outside and inside world, controlling what goes in and out of the cell, right? Some stuff you don't want in, some stuff you do want in, some stuff you want to let out, some stuff you want to keep in, right? It's also, since it's interacting with the environment, yeah, there you might have sensory re or receptors in here that can tell it that this is a good place to move toward or move away from. All right, so this is the cell membrane. This is a lot of what we talked about with the epithelial, but we're talking about a body membrane here. All right, so you got, instead of a single cell, you have a whole sheet of cells performing that barrier function, determining what goes in the body, leaves the body, right? So you got these epithelial cells doing that. Underneath those epithelial cells, it's sitting on something to connect it to, right? So epithelial, is those tightly bound groups of cells. And connective tissue is cells spaced out. In between them is a matrix, right? And because there's so much space in between them, this allows room for things like blood vessels and other structures to sort of penetrate that space, right? So when we talked about the different types of epithelial, uh, this right here, as this already says, is a simple squamous cell, right? You could tell by the flattened nuclei, right? Underneath it all, right here, is some loose connective tissue right here, right? And so when you combine these two together, right, you're going to get a membrane. And the definition of an organ is two or more tissue types working together to perform a common function so a membrane is our simplest organ and it's going to the structure of it or histology in this case is a superficial layer of epithelial tissue underlied by a layer of loose connective tissue and there's four types of these membranes these body membranes that will be on the exam for instance right so these are called a mucus membranes a serous membranes cutaneous and synovial Right, so this right here is what's lining the outside of your body, right? This is the epithelial and loose connective tissue that forms the cutaneous membrane. That's a stratified squamous epithelial keratinized, right? That's facing the external environment, right? And that's protecting against abrasion and invasion, meaning that if you scrape this or if you rub up against stuff, it won't just fall off and damage the underlying tissue, right? So the cutaneous membrane is, that's where it is. It's confined to the skin, basically, the outside of your skin right there. Right, so that's the cutaneous membrane. Another membrane is called a synovial membrane, named for these synovial joints, or maybe the joints are named after the synovial membrane. This is a simple squamous epithelial called synoviocytes. They line this joint cavity and then they're underlied by this areolar tissue, a loose connective tissue. Okay, and they're producing this fluid which fills up your joint cavity. So that's your synovial membrane. Next one uh, we'll encounter in next in our respiratory system and then your digestive system and a few others. This could be a bunch of different types of epithelia. And the characteristic is that there's going to be some sort of secretions from either gland cells or underlying glands. It's going to pro provide a layer of mucus to keep that wet, right? It's inside your body. There's not a danger of dehydration. So inside your body, this is all inside your body right there. Okay, and it has a couple different functions. Here is, for instance, might be inside your mouth, right here, that stratified squamous. Uh, these gland cells are producing something that is gonna coat and keep this moist. This is the inside of your stomach. There's uh, mucus layer on the top right here. This might be the lining of your respiratory tract uh, that's producing a mucus layer there, right? So all of them are gonna be referred to as mucus membranes as long as it's wet. All right, next type serous membranes. This is going to be with those cavities that we talked about on the first lecture. 
These are lining your ventral body cavities and all those ones like your pleural lining the lungs and your pericardial lining the heart, right? And the function of these is to create a fluid filled body cavity, right? So here's your epithelial layer secreting this layer of serous fluid that's gonna fill the cavity. Going back, the first lecture with ventral body cavities. Remember that big open space? It was divided into thoracic and a abdominal pelvic cavity. And within those cavities, you had those cavities that were created by the serosa or the serous membranes, right? You had your lungs, you had your heart, and then not shown, would you would have all your guts, right? Your liver, your stomach, your small intestines, right? All those would be within there. And so these are all lined with what's called these pleural, pericardial, or, well, not shown here, but that would be the peritoneal cavity, right? So these are serous cavities formed by those serous membranes, and they create these spaces, fluid-filled spaces that's going to allow the organs like the heart to move around and not cause a lot of friction on the surrounding objects, right? And so your lungs would be right here and your heart's beating. It doesn't want to like create a lot of friction in between them. So sitting in a little sack like this is going to allow the prevention of friction. Your lungs, likewise, are sitting in those little sacs right there, right, in this pleural cavity. Here's the lung tissue. Here's the outside of your rib cage. You got this little lining fluid-filled space in here so that when you sort of attach it to the rest of the body, as we'll talk about. These ventral potty cavities formed by the serosa, secreting continuous membranes. And by continuous, you know, it means like if this was a, some kind of weird balloon that your fist was in, right? It's all one surface area. It's just that one side is attached to the fist in this case, and one side is facing the outside. And then in between, you got this cavity, this fluid filled space. Okay? And so the lining that is touching the organ is called one thing. And then the lining that's on the outside is called another thing, right? The lining on the outside is called a parietal part of your membrane, and this other part is called your visceral part of your membrane. So this is, so your visceral is actually touching the heart tissue right here. So it's lining the organ. It's basically forming the outer or layer of your organ. And then the parietal part is gonna be on the outside, right? Touching whatever's on the outside here, right? So right on the outside here, you might actually have a lung here tissue would be connected to the parietal pleura, as it turns out, right? So these are the two sections. You see it's a continuous layer, but one's touching the heart, one's on the outside, parietal, visceral. And so that's the first name of any of these serous membranes. And so you'll have your parietal pericardium, and you'll have a visceral pericardium, a parietal pleura, and a visceral pleura, a parietal peritoneum, a visceral peritoneum. So that second name refers to the actual cavity, right? So pleura peritoneum is the cavity that those form. Here is your heart again, right? This layer right here is directly attached to the heart. This is your visceral pericardium. This is the loose connective tissue that would be attached and really form the outer layer of your heart, right? So it's connected like that. And then you'd have your pericardial cavity the space in between that'll be filled with fluid. And then as it moves around here, you have your parietal pericardium, right? This is gonna be attached to that space, the media steinum, right? It might also be attached to the parietal pleura, right? Because the lungs are gonna be sitting right here. Right? So visceral pericardium, parietal pericardium, in between, you got your pericardial cavity. Epithelial tissue, loose connective tissue. And it's gonna lubricate it so it can move inside this cavity. Right? So that fluid fill space is gonna allow that movement and prevent friction. Your lungs are sitting in the pleural serous cavity. Pleural, remember, means two. There's two lungs. So here's the cavity right here, right? That 
is going to be lining the lung. This part is going to be attached to the rib cage. This part right here is going to be attached to the lung tissue. Right? So here's that same close up. Here's the visceral pleura attached to the lung tissue. It goes all the way around and becomes the parietal pleura, which is going to be attached to the rib cage over here, your diaphragm over here, your heart over here, and your mediastinum over here, right? So the parietal pleura is just going to be attached to whatever is adjacent to it. All right, last one is your peritoneal serous cavity. This one's more complicated because you have several organs involved, right? Pretend this, this is the liver right here. Pretend it's the heart, right? You have your parietal layer sitting outside attached to the outside layer right here in red, right? And so the red goes all the way around the entire um, abdominal pelvic cavity almost that turns into your visceral part of it here that's lining in this case the liver, right? So that's simple. You could see how it has the same structure as the lungs and the heart that we just looked at. But because there's the stomach and the small intestines and everything, uh, this is going to be more complicated. It's going to branch off and have these other structures called mesenteries that are going to connect all these organs together right there, right? But it's going to be the same structure. It's just more complicated. Right? Your parietal peritoneum, visceral, touching each organ. And then in between, you got your peritoneal cavity. There are some organs uh, that are going to be behind this whole cavity. Those are called retroperitoneal. Hey, that's it.